Hello people, this is a tips and tricks tutorial, sort of what comes into mind on Blender. Uh, first off, let's start with this uh, Cycles thing. So I got this scene here in Cycles, which is uh, if we press to the preview, uh, hold shift and press Z, we can see it's highly detailed there's a lot of stuff and it's kind of slow to show us the camera view which we want to see here so how could we see a portion of uh, the image to see just uh, how the materials look and if there's a detail we want to look at how could we specify where we want to look and get this much faster okay so I'm gonna go back press shift and Z and then I'm gonna press shift and B and pull out this border so now I got this red border here and if I press shift and Z it's only gonna show me the part that I selected here and it goes much faster to the uh, sample amount actually we could increase the samples here for the preview let's make it 100 so if I go back there's actually volumetrics here so that's why it's taking so long and there's still a lot of noise so I'm gonna hold down shift and press Z and actually gonna just see what this part looks like so I'm gonna hold down shift and press B and hold down my left mouse while pulling this box okay shift and Z should now get a detailed look at this part and of course it's gonna start all over if I scroll out or zoom in this is a good way to get an idea of of the colors that are going in uh, in your details and also the materials like if you have shiny stuff such as this one you can see the behavior that it's reflecting reflecting light just as you want it to by the way you can get rid of the borders by holding down control alt and then pressing b that way you get back to the uh, the full preview. All right, so let's talk about speeding up cycles. So over here I have this scene with a lot of reflective surfaces and lights. So rendering this scene uh, let's see if I go over here to the render tab and I actually disable that preview and check my sampling my render samples are at 128 <clears throat> okay so if I wanted to speed that up I could go here to light paths and over here we have bounces currently it's set to 1 but by default it's set to 12 okay and that gives you a lot of information about the light bounces so they uh, reflect from the surface and they bounce to the other side of the surface they bounce back and they scatter around basically so over here I have two renders this is the first one with uh, 12 bounces so you can see there's 
there's a lot of this noise going on of course because it's a low sample size and all that but if we go to slot 2 where I rendered this same scene with the max bounces of 1 you can see it's more black and uh, you lose a lot of information but the uh, point here is that it's much faster so if you need to make a preview uh, and you don't care about the reflections that much in the preview you sort of have the idea maybe then you can save some time by using this so over here you see the time it took to render out this frame 2 minutes 15 seconds all right going to slot 2 it took only 1 minute 10 seconds so it's much faster so over here light bounces maximum if you change that you can get faster renders okay guys this tutorial is about shift d duplication versus alt d duplication shift d make, makes a duplicate that's independent from from the object that you duplicated it from and then you got alt d which makes an instance which basically means that you have a copy that follows whatever the uh, original copy is doing let me give you an example so here we have the cube all right and if i hold down shift and press d i can get a duplicate of it then i uh, go into edit mode i can do whatever i like to that duplicate like so whatever the original one stays the same okay but what if I make this with holding down alt and pressing D now it seems I got the same same thing here but what if I go into edit mode you see in object mode these are two separate objects okay you can change their location independently but Um, if I go into edit mode and start editing this uh, duplicate you can see the same thing is happening in the original so that's instancing so basically you can get uh, if you need to make a bunch of similar things and then you want to make some changes those maybe like robot legs or whatever then this is a good tool so shift d is the independent duplicate and alt d is an instance all right next one what if you want a transparent background in cycles so first let's change over to cycles from blender render and over here in the render settings so if I just go to preview real quick here mm, you have this section called film and if you tick this box transparent then you get a transparent background so if you want to render out some things you need to place uh, on top of some footage then this is your this is your tab here you're gonna need that all right so this next one is about color management um, you can do all sorts of stuff after you have rendered an image so right here I have this Blade Runner scene and I want to manage the colors of it so I would go over here to the scene tab which is this one and further down there is this uh, arrow for color management you want to go there you can this probably is set to default 
So you see it preserves most of the information. It's a bit too... Uh, it's not dark enough to my liking. So I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna adjust the exposure back to 2. Then I'm gonna change the view to film. And then you can start tweaking uh, the look. So you got these um, different kind of looks from different cameras. And you got your basic stuff here, very low contrast. Uh, low contrast, medium, low contrast, base con contrast, um, high contrast. And uh, yeah, then you got these uh, camera settings, which are very interesting. They can give you some random results, but once you get familiar with those and try them out you can find some really effective ones so they're basically like filters on Instagram <laughs> or whatever but uh, then you can of course tweak them with these same settings here and then there's the use curves option where you can adjust the curves of the image to bring out some stuff further. For example, the reds, if I want them to pop or make the whole image more red, then I can do it here with the curves. Yeah. Okay, this one is about shadow capture, uh, a thing that arrived in Blender quite recently. So basically the idea is that you can just render out the shadows, which helps if you're compositing something, uh, putting some objects on a footage, and you just want the shadow layer and want to be able to adjust that. So let me demonstrate. I'm going to add plane and put it underneath this cube. So if I go into the preview now, you could see there's a shadow. So let's say I want that shadow to be rendered, but nothing else. So I could go here, uh, select the cube, go to the object tab for that cube and go to the cycle settings and disable its camera visibility. So that's invisible now. Then I want to set this plane to be a shadow catcher. So if I go into preview now, I only get the shadow. And not the edges but there's one more problem and that's the background because it's gray so how can we fix that we could go to render settings and over here in film set it to transparent so now we have a transparent background with only the shadow rendered so that's very nice However, there might be an issue of banding. At least I saw banding there a bit. So if you want to get rid of banding, you go over here to post processing and increase the dither or dither. Mm. That one. Increase that uh, to one or more it goes all the way up to two which should get you out of the banding thing banding means that you have this like uh, not a not a um, complete gradient but you have these like steps that you can see where the color is turning into another